What's up YouTube, Jeff back again today with a very exciting Samsung video for you guys. Today, we're going to be talking about how to put your Galaxy S24 Ultra into beast mode. I got a couple beasts here today. My son Jonathan always gives us some dinos in the video. We got the Elasmosaurus, the Stegosaurus. By beast mode, I mean the best productivity and gaming media viewing settings you can get on this phone. So this one is not about, you know, day-to-day -day settings to improve quality of life. This is mainly if you want to get a ton of work done, you want to play some games at a high level, and also you want to watch media movies in the best, brightest quality you possibly can. So before we get started, I want to remind you guys, if you haven't followed me on the channel, check out my socials on my alpha link. Sign up for the newsletter. If you're new to the channel, we do mystery boxes for each launch. You get a free case cleaning kit, desktop phone stand if you buy your Samsung phone through our affiliate link. Uh, the one for the S24 is currently closed because we're shipping. We'll have another one for the foldables in August and then next year for the S25. Sign up for the newsletter so you stay informed, though. I may open the S24 Ultra ones back up later if you're planning to buy one next month or something. I'm going to consider it. we got to see how much stock we have. But I'll drop the link below if you guys want to check it out. So today, I have quite a few things on the list here. The first thing is reduce animations and accessibility touch and hold. So accessibility touch and hold, I've talked about this setting before. This is something that allows you to kind of fly around the device a little bit faster. So if you go to accessibility, and then you go down here to where it says interactions and dexterity, touch and hold will basically reduce the time that it takes for continuous touch to be recognized as a long press and hold touch. Um, it doesn't affect the keyboard. I choose it very short. That way, if I need to do a long touch when I'm doing something for productivity, I can just long press on it right away and get right in there and I'm good to go. So that's what I recommend. It, it makes it a little easier to fly around. Now, animations wise, a lot of you guys probably know this. If you go down to software about phone, so about phone and go into your software info, I want to go ahead and put this behind the camera just because I don't want to put my phone number on blast. If you go to software information inside about phone and you repeatedly tap on the build number here, it's going to enable developer mode. Let me just take my phone number off the screen there. If you go into developer mode, then down here you have developer options at the very bottom. And when you go in there, if you search at the very top for animator, you'll actually see it right here. Predictive back animations, transition animation scale, window animation scale, tap on the animation scale. You can turn these down from one to 0.5 on all three of these. And it just speeds up your device quite a bit in terms of the animations. You're not seeing the animations as long. Now for some people, this can be jarring. So you have to kind of play with it, see what works for you. But I find that 0.5 seems a lot zippier, a lot faster for me. It's what I recommend, but definitely play with the settings and kind of see what works for you at the end of the day. Uh, the next thing on my list is the swipe down for notifications. So if we go in here, long press on the home screen, go to settings, swipe down for notifications is not enabled for everybody on every single model of the S24 Ultra. Make sure you have this enabled because then you don't have to go to the very top to swipe down. You can swipe anywhere on the home screen to get the notification shade down. Now that's important because this is a tall phone and if you want to be flying around kind of getting stuff done, multitasking in the best possible way, then you obviously want to have that turned on so that it's easier for you to navigate around the phone. Uh, the next thing is, and I unchecked this one, I, I'm checking stuff I didn't even mean to here. So we've got reduce animations, accessibility, touch and hold. Uh, we've got the swipe down for notifications. The next thing is the advanced features remove the press for Bixby. So what this does, if we go down, is if you go into your settings menu and go to advanced settings, right down here at the bottom, you'll see advanced features. And uh, right here where it says side button, go ahead and choose this. And then when you choose this, you can turn off the ability to wake Bixby from here and replace it with the power off menu. That's what I recommend because most people, when they long press the power button, you don't want to wake Bixby because it's going to slow you down if you're trying to, you know, you can sometimes double click the power button for the camera, right, which is the double press. You might also want to switch that to a different app. So you can do both of those things within here. The other thing that you can also do from in here is the multi-window. Make sure you've got all of your multi-window stuff turned on. Swipe for split screen and swipe for pop-up view. This basically allows you to swipe down from the top corner to get a pop-up view. Now, it's sometimes a little tricky when you're in the settings but it does work very well. You guys can see right there. Uh, and then of course you can go back full screen whenever you want. So that's another thing to turn on. Definitely your multi-window settings because that will allow you to do a lot of productivity tasks 
um, as you're kind of in there working and doing things like that. Up next on my list is the Auto Optimization and RAM Plus. So Auto Optimization and RAM Plus is an ability to basically clean your phone of anything that's going on in the background to make sure that you're getting the fastest performance. So if we go into the settings page again, and we scroll down to device care, which is separate from the battery settings now. And if you go into memory and go to the bottom here, you'll see RAM Plus. Now what RAM Plus does is RAM Plus lets you use some of your storage as virtual memory. It's gonna speed up your phone, it's gonna make it a little faster, a little zippier. And uh, I use the maximum amount, because why not? Now when you change this, it is gonna make you restart the phone. So keep that in mind. Uh, you're gonna have to restart it if you change it to a larger amount. Four gigabytes is the default, I believe. Uh, on the new phones. They also have this new feature called Memory Resident Apps, which are apps that run in the background all the time. Sometimes it's necessary, but sometimes if you download an app that's going rogue and you're getting a lot of battery drain, you can check here. This is a new feature in One UI 6.1. And if you have something that's draining your battery, you notice a new app maybe you installed, you can check here and see if it's running in the background when it shouldn't be. That's a great way to clear up some battery issues as well. The next thing is enable AI features and also the Bixby text call. So enable AI and Bixby text call. So Bixby text call is inside the phone settings. Let me make sure I don't put anyone on blast here. If you go into your phone settings and you go down to the settings menu, you'll see right here, you've got live translate and also text call. Text call allows Bixby to answer the call for you and show you a transcription in text as you kind of the call progresses and you can answer at any time, but you can also have quick responses that basically ask people to repeat something, who are you, etc. It's a great way to screen spam. And if you get a lot of spam calls, they slow down your workday. You can easily use this as a tool to kind of weed those out. And if it is an important call, you can see what the person's calling about in the transcription, and then you'll be able to go ahead and take action on that. The other thing, which is along with this, is you can use the new features inside of the AI to do translation. So if you go down here, once again, to advanced features, advanced intelligence, you've got a bunch of different AI features you'll wanna look at and turn on or decide if you want to turn them on. For phone, you've got live translate, which is if you've got someone else that's speaking a different language, Samsung keyboard, chat translation, style and grammar. I made a video specifically about this feature, uh, fully detailed how it works. If you wanna check it out, I'll drop it below. Interpreter, the Samsung Notes, which will basically summarize your notes if you take handwritten notes with your S Pen. Voice Recorder, I also made a video about this feature. It'll give you summaries of your voice recordings. Very useful if you're a student or you have a lot of work meetings. Uh, that's an awesome feature. Uh, Samsung Internet, which will also give you summaries of web pages. The Photo Editor, which will let you do edits and different ways of processing uh, generative fill and all that kind of stuff. So if you wanna play around with that, you can press OK. Uh, it's a great way to play around and edit your photos in a more impactful way. So I recommend turning all of these on. Now, if you're worried about privacy concerns, you can turn this on as well to process data only on the device, but some of the features will be limited and some of them may not work at all because you're not processing things in Samsung's cloud server, but you're also keeping all of your data on device. So it's a lot more secure, a lot more private. The next thing is the Dolby Atmos and Game Booster settings. So if we go into Dolby Atmos here, Let's tap here. You can go ahead and search in the settings for Dolby Atmos. You'll find it under sounds and vibration. There's two of them, regular Dolby Atmos and Dolby Atmos for gaming. Make sure both of these are turned on. And then another really fun setting here at the top, or here at the bottom is Adapt Sound. So what Adapt Sound lets you do is it gives you perfect sound that's tuned for your ears. It works whenever you're wearing headphones. And you can choose a preset to match kind of your own personalized sound profile. And you can choose your age here or choose a personalized sound profile. This is a cool feature. They added this recently. I actually don't know if this was 6.0 or 6.1, but it's something that I've been using. You can also tune the equalizer right there as well. So the Dolby Atmos is absolutely fantastic for audio. Now also the Game Booster setting, that's the other thing that I wanted to mention here, Game Booster. So if you search up here in the settings as well, you'll find the Game Booster setting. So search for Game Booster right here, Game Booster settings. There's quite a few things you can do if you're an avid gamer. I play a lot of Pokemon Go with my son. You can block things during the game, have floating shortcuts, turn on the shortcut bar, save power during touch protection, so reduce the frame rate for games while touch protection is active, screenshot resolution, 
screenshot format, format uh, game optimization. You can choose to turn this on performance standard or battery saver. It's on performance by default, but make sure that's there. Uh, you can also go into the labs menu and there is a new feature called alternate game management they added that improves the performance, um, but it also causes some heating issues. So it will give you worse battery life, but if you play a lot of really heavy games, this is something that you definitely want to toggle and make sure it's turned on. If you scroll down to advanced features, and then once you're in advanced features, go to video brightness, you can turn on bright here, and that will allow you to choose which apps you want to use bright mode on. Now this one typically increase the spring brightness, make the colors more vibrant. So for those of you who are missing out on the vibrancy uh, of the basic display settings, of course, some people have said that the S24 Ultra has a muted display. Not really sure I agree with that, but some people have said that. You could then try to enable it here um, and utilize this extra bright, you know, in video, and it'll give you a little bit brighter, more vivid colors. People enjoy that. And I think if you're really watching a lot of media on your S24 Ultra, it's a good thing to enable. Last thing is, well, if you enable all these things, you're probably going to have to also be cognizant sometimes of your battery usage. So I did want to mention that if you are not using the phone for a large period of time for any heavy tasks, one thing you can do is you can go into the battery settings and you can change a couple of things. So the one thing that I recommend is background usage limits. You can put unused apps to sleep, some of them that you're not using. And then also you can set up your power saving so that it does the things you want. So if you don't want to limit the CPU speed, you can turn that off. And then when you turn on power saving, it won't do that. So you can turn on as many of these things uh, as you want, and you can turn them off if you want as well, just to get the perfect mix for you. You can also turn your phone into the light performance profile if you're not going to be using it for a long period of time. I don't recommend this. So if you go to device care, if you're going to be using it, performance profile standard. If you're going to be using it heavy, definitely keep it in standard. But if you're not going to be using it heavy for a day or for a period of time to save some battery life from when you do use it heavier, you can turn it on light mode, which will prioritize the cooling and it'll make it a little less battery hungry and you'll get better battery life. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this beast mode video. If you did, like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification icon, future videos like this. Again, definitely check out my website, the newsletter, all that stuff. So if you want to participate in future mystery box programs, you can do so. We appreciate you guys checking it out, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks a lot for watching.